Welcome back friends to another an interesting pediatric neurosurgery case. Here I am presenting you an 8 months old baby, a first born male child of a non consanguineous marriage presented to us with increasing head size and irritability for the last just 15 days. On examination, child head circumference of 46 cm with dilated veins and sunset sign. Here you can see in the MRI that there is a dilated third ventricles, temporal horns as well as with a good mantle and a ballooned up frontal horns. If you can see it looks like an eggs on end appearance in the coronal sections with the periventricular lucencies. There is a good mantle but you can see that the aqueduct was small and the fourth ventricle was normal in size. So this was a case of congenital aqueductal stenosis with hydrocephalus. So we planned for an endoscopic third ventriculostomy even though the sci the age of the patient is just 8 months, we realized that this would be an ideal opportunity even though less than 1 year of age, sometimes the endoscopic third ventriculostomy has got high failure rates. After convincing the patients, our mother and the father and we took the patient for right frontal burr hole, pre coronal burr hole and then we entered the ventricle at the depth of 4 to 5 centimeters. Here you can see the endoscopic sheet has been slowly progressively put across the foramen of Munro into the third ventricle. Now you can see here that this is the floor of the third ventricle and you can see the basilar artery with the pulsations. Now you can see that the just side of the basilar artery with the monopolar artery I am trying to perforate the floor of the fourth ventricle just behind the dorsal clinoids. Now this is a 3 French balloon catheter, Fogati catheter which has been inserted to the stroma and dilatation is being progressively made. Here after the progressive dilatation has been made, we always make sure that we achieve the size of the stroma minimum equivalent to the size of the endoscope that is about 2 to 2.5 millimeters in size. But since the space was small and the child is a young infant of just 8 months old, you can make out that there was a slightly difficulty in achieving a larger size. Now you can see here that the floor of the third ventricle as well as the liliquist membrane has been punctured. You can make out into the hole which has been done through the uh, stoma you can make out. Now an attempt to enlarge as well as dilate the uh, stoma resulted in a small bleed. Even though the bleed is small, it directly definitely makes your vision blur. Now once that has been again controlled with further coagulation with the bipolar as well as holding the pressure such that there is a tamponade effect and the bleeding stops, we have again inserted the Fogarty catheter to achieve the maximum size of the stoma. Once that is done, you can see that the floor of the third ventricle has made a good fantastic large stoma and now I have put that Fogati down and you all can see there that I am dilating and trying to make sure that the liliquist membrane is also open. That is the most important point in endoscopic third ventricle that you should see the naked basilar artery or its branches which you can very well make out there. Since it is slightly side of the midline, I was not able to put the scope there. Now after seeing that, you can see that the forearm of Munro is quite normal, no contusion seen, the choroid plexus is seen, the septal vein is seen and we come out of the this one. Immediately after two days, the surgery, you can see that the temporal horns have come down and the subdural space is, is being seen in the patient CT scan. Thank you.